Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory always. Amen. I invite you to take out your notes and follow along. We pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time together just to be in your word and uh, and to, to hear what you would have to say to us today. Give us ears to hear. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, again, happy Mother's Day. My, oh my. Uh, you know, outside of our faith, in this world, nothing is more important than family. Family is the basic unit that God has established for society. Uh, the, the, it, it was the first institution God put into place after creation. And every family is different. You know, Sue said that we're all family. Man, we have a crazy family. <laughs> uh, we're all family, and, and every family is different. We have different uh, backgrounds, different personalities. And, and so uh, it takes different parenting styles as you encourage and build up your family. I know all my kids are different. And, uh, uh, and, and so it takes different ways to, to build up and encourage them. Parenting is hard. But God's word reveals certain principles in parenting that are universal, goes for every family without exception. Now, I believe, I believe that, that the heart of the family often flows from the mom. She's the one the family turns to when they're in pain or they're having some kind of sadness. She's the one who teaches tenderness and love. The mom is the one who, who teaches compassion. So, so that's why I say she's really, she's really the heart of the family. Now, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, we see some essential qualities of a godly mother and a godly father. But since it's Mother Day, we're just going to talk about moms. But as always, I, I, I want you to understand, God has something for all of us. Paul is, is really talking about uh, his work as an evangelist. And, and so this is really about the way that we, you and me, and, and Paul and, and everyone, are to present the gospel and talk about our faith to others. But he uses the analogy of a mother. It's good stuff. So even though you're talking about moms, it's really for all of us, because Jesus said, let your light so shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So in an indirect way, Paul gives us a concise description of the qualities of a godly mom. For example, a godly mother is gentle with her children, not uh, a burden to them. He says, For we never came with flattering speech, as you know, nor with a pretext for greed, God is witness, nor did we seek glory from men, either from you or from others, even though, as apostles of Christ, we might have asserted our authority. But we proved to be gentle among you as a nursing mother tenderly cares for her own children. Paul says, you know, we could have come and relied on our power and authority as apostles, and we could have said, hey, you need to support us as we preach the gospel. But we didn't use our authority to weigh you down. Rather, because we didn't want to be burdened, we, we came to serve you with love and care. Moms, you have uh, authority over your children. And, and so the question becomes, are you using that authority to weigh them down or to build them up? Uh, this word mother here is kind of unique. It is the, the word for a nursing mom, uh, nursing a little infant. And then the word that we translate tenderly cares, it literally means to keep warm or to cherish with tender love. And so Paul's painting this picture of just a, a, a mom holding her newborn with tender love. And again, I just remind her, this is the way that we are to demonstrate our faith to those around us. God is, it, it gives us some ways now throughout Scripture that we can be gentle uh, and not be a burden. 
For example, he says, a tender mother uses gentle, not harsh words. Solomon, in all his wisdom, said, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Your words have the ability to mold and shape a child for life. Children tend to see themselves through the eyes of their parents. And so parents, every, every word you speak, gentle or harsh, kind or unkind, uh, shapes your child's self-image. So use gentle words with your children. For example, <laughs> children love to argue. Uh, they, they, they argue with each other. They argue with their parents. They argue with their teachers. They just don't argue with their pastor. <laughs> uh, don't let children draw you into an argument. Uh, you are the adult. Paul says, the Lord's bondservant must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to all, able to teach, patient when wronged, with the gentleness correcting those who are in opposition, if perhaps God may grant them repentance, leading to the knowledge of the truth. So, so instead of being drawn into an argument, we see this as an opportunity to teach God's love and peace and that we do not respond with harsh words or in anger. Again, Solomon said, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And so we speak truth in gentleness, but we speak truth in love. A tender mother disciplines with love. Now, it is possible to be gentle and not be a pushover. Parents you know, we don't let our children do whatever they want, whenever they want. Uh, uh, moms, you don't let your children disrespect you. Exercise firm but loving discipline. Solomon said, whoever spares the rod hates their children, but he who loves their children is careful to discipline them. Or again, Solomon said, correction and instruction are the way to lie. Truth is, children actually want correction and discipline because it shows them that there are boundaries in life and those boundaries show them how much that they are loved. Now understand, this is a rod of correction, not a rod of abuse. A nurturing mom is firm and consistent in discipline and she's also loving and kind. Discipline is never done out of control. It's never done in anger. It's always controlled. It's always appropriate for correction because it's, it is designed to affirm love for the child and correct behavior. There's a difference between punishment and discipline. And the loving mom is not out to punish. She's out to discipline. And that word discipline means uh, uh, to learn. And that's what we're after. We want children to learn for correction. It's a guiding rod. Uh, a tender mother carries her children's burdens. Paul said, we might have asserted our authority, but proved to be gentle among you. Now, uh, moms, moms, uh, uh, part of her job is to carry her child's burden. And that means you need to know what to carry and when to carry it. Uh, a mother will carry burdens for her child according to their age and ability. For example, uh, when the child is a newborn child, she carries all the burdens. She, she feeds and dresses and changes them. But gradually, gradually, as the children grow, they get more responsibilities, again, uh, uh, according to their age and ability. Uh, however, hopefully, 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 one day they will grow up and leave home being prepared to carry their own burdens. Again, still parents will never stop caring. They'll never stop wanting to take the burdens. And moms, my, my moms just feel their child's burdens. And, and though we, we uh, carry our children's burdens, understand this, we never carry them alone. Paul said, bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. Sometimes mothers try to do it all alone, especially if they're single moms. None of us, none of us were meant to carry burdens alone. Moms need other moms who have been where they are and can understand and help and encourage. We all need other people for prayer and support. But most of all, we need Jesus. Peter said, 
Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Beloved, parents will never stop worrying about their kids, so they need to learn how to give their kids to Jesus. They need to learn how to trust their burdens to the Lord, or they're going to be overwhelmed. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, uh, truth be told, moms are naturally more gentle with their children than fathers. But still, it's interesting in verse 7, it's interesting in verse 7, uh, Paul says, we were gentle among you, uh, and uh, a more accurate translation would be that we were uh, made to be gentle among you, or we became gentle among you. Again, Paul was not by nature gentle. He had been through all kinds of of terrible things. And so Paul had to learn gentleness. It, it didn't come natural, but it, it's a change that can only take place by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and in fact, gentleness is one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit living in us. Paul said in Galatians 5, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so we ask God, to develop that fruit of gentleness and that we might demonstrate it in our life. And a godly mother teaches children about God's love for, in Christ to her children. Now, uh, <laughs> Paul said, we loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become so dear to us. Paul and his companions had gone to Thessalonica to preach the gospel, but, but they had such a love for those people that they not only shared the gospel, they shared their very lives and themselves. And it was not an obligation, it was a joy, it was a delight. Paul said, uh, do nothing out of selfish, uh, selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. That, that is an act of genuine love. A godly mother uh, uh, shares in the gospel in word and action. That is not an obligation, it's a joy, it's a delight, it's a, it's a way of life. And so as you think about that, there are a couple things to keep in mind. For example, time passes quickly. Enjoy them while they're young. Talk to any parent with grown children and they'll tell you, Man, the time just flew by. So enjoy this time. I know uh, for me, I, I miss going to their games and, and cuddling together and reading to them, telling them about Jesus. I miss their wacky questions and my made-up answers. And, and just enjoy this time while you can. But no one, no one can replace the rule of a mother. Your children need you to share your life with them and care for them. Children get an idea of what God, their father, is like from their earthly father. But moms teach them about gentleness and love. And you have a huge influence on them. The most precious gift you can give your children is the gift of your time. Show them how much you care, how much they matter to you, and then share your life with your children. One of the ways you can do that is read the Bible to them. Teach them God's Word. The most important thing any of us can do is to pass on our faith to our kids. Paul said, For I am mindful of the sincere faith within you, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I'm sure that it's in you as well. I love this, that Lois and Eunice passed on their faith to Timothy. And I love the idea that it came from their mom and grandma, not from the, the fathers. And they were purposeful about passing on their faith. Paul even tells us how to do this. He said in 2 Timothy, that from childhood you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you wisdom that leads to salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, uh, the Bible, the Bible contains the truth of Jesus, who he is, what he's done for us, 
And, and Timothy heard those scriptures from infancy. Um, read the Bible to your children. It is never too late to begin, and it's never too early to start. And then not just read the Bible to them, but show them. Show them Jesus. We often talk about here how much the faith is, is as much caught as it is taught. So let them see the difference Jesus makes for you. Paul said, Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to him uh, through him to God the Father. And that means let them see you uh, pray, because that's how they're going to learn to pray. Let them see you reading your Bible, and they're going to get an idea how, how important the Bible is for them. Let them see how much you depend on Jesus and the importance of going to church. Now, and by the way, I know I'm preaching to the choir because you're all here today. But if you slough off on going to church just a little, they will slough off on going to church a lot. We set the example. Don't just, just send the kids to Sunday school. Be a, a student of the Word yourself and go to Bible class. We set the tone. It's for all of us. And, and parents, make Jesus a priority. Be ready to share with them how, how they can trust their very lives to Jesus as their Savior. Teach them how much God loves them. And you can teach them about the power of the cross and how Jesus died for all their sin and guilt, that they can live a life free from shame. And then the importance of Easter, how Jesus rose from the dead to give them life and salvation. Uh, that there's joy and peace that comes from knowing that your sins are forgiven and life eternal is yours. Show them Jesus. Another thing about moms, <laughs> a godly mother's hard work never ends. Paul said, for you remember, brothers, our labor and toil, we work night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. Now, uh, uh, Paul and Silas and Timothy worked really hard while they were in uh, the Thessalonica. Uh, they, they worked really hard so that they wouldn't ask for any support from the people, uh, so it wouldn't be any kind of burden and be free to preach the gospel. And Paul uses two words to describe what their work and describes the work of moms. He says, labor and toil, labor and toil. And uh, uh, these words, the first word, labor, means just an exhausting labor, a weary one that involves sweat and fatigue, that, that one kind of work that just drains all your strength. Sounds like a mom. And the second word, toil, means hard and difficult work, uh, work that is uh, uh, just is stressful and is painful, that kind of thing. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I read that, I get tired. Uh, you, we, are, we all know the saying, a father works from son to son. Yeah, I never can remember that second part. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, a mother's work just never seems to end. Uh, long after kids grow up and move out, well, long after they grow up, moms will never stop being moms. Again, for you remember, brothers, our labor and toil, we work night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. Moms will never stop being moms. And uh, most of all, moms want their kids to know Jesus. And she will never stop praying for her kids. Being a mom is perhaps one of the most challenging and yet rewarding jobs in the world. And you can read all kinds of books on the subject, but you will never find better instruction than right here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. It's a universal truth. And so moms, we honor you this morning for all you do. Uh, and nothing can be more important than the work that you do for us. Proverbs 31 says... A woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. We praise the Lord for you today. To God be the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now may that peace of God that surpasses all our human understanding keep our hearts and minds ever fixed on the author and perfecter of our faith, our Lord, our Savior Jesus. Amen.